Cancer Lawn Research Project was completed under the unfailing oversight of Dr. Ann Gaffney. So I'll start by telling you a little bit about myself and how this project came to be. I'm originally a native of California, and in September of 2009, my husband and I made the move to Alaska. Pursuing this degree and working at the time as an accounting specialist, I'm always in search of a re relaxing outlet. This capstone project therefore afforded me the opportunity to investigate an interest I've always had in the ancient Eastern practice of meditation. Because I wanted this project and the information I gathered to benefit others outside of just myself, I decided to personally adopt as well as research the benefits of a meditative practice as a mechanism for anxiety management. In addition to the research, part of my understanding of this practice was derived from visiting local establishments and subsequently evaluating my experiences. Before I reveal these results, however, it's worth reflecting on general statistics of anxiety disorders in America today. According to statistics published by the Anxiety Disorders of America, or ABAA, anxiety disorders are the most common mental illnesses in the U.S. affecting 40 million adults ages 18 and older. This equates to approximately 18% of the total population. Further, as researcher Gibble makes evident in her analysis, college students are particularly susceptible to the debilitating symptoms of stress and anxiety disorders. A few of the reasons she cites for this susceptibility relate to establishing one's identity apart from family and parents, having questions about one's religious or experience, religion or experiencing religious doubts, formulating one's political identity, defini defining one's sexual orientation, making decisions about dating and romantic relationships, and choosing a career path. As the ABAA website's resource section explains further, among the most common approaches in anxiety management includes various forms of therapeutic treatment to include cognitive behavioral therapy, and exposure therapy, as well as physician prescribed medication treatments in the forms of antidepressants and serotonin inhibitors. It's only within the last couple decades that meditation has been proposed as a serious approach to rival these other generally accepted treatments. In fact, studies such as those reviewed in this project have been have successfully demonstrated the prowess of meditation as a viable approach to anxiety management. As evidence, a study conducted by researchers Palm, Elam, and Beerholz found after six weeks of incorporating a deep breathing meditative practice into regular routine, students received the positive effects of increasing concentration, decreasing test anxiety, nervousness, and self-doubt during the exam. In terms of performance anxiety, a study by Kasala, Shorter, Cope, Wyshak, and Schuyler suggested that the adoption of regular yoga and meditative practices prior to musical performances can reduce performance anxiety in young professional musicians. In addition, a study by Kate Ping, Wei Ming, and Chen Quan discusses the ability of meditation to serve as an effective coping strategy for those symptoms associated with normal college stressors as outlined earlier by Gibble. Finally, the results of a scholarly review of literature entitled Meditation Therapy for Anxiety Disorders concluded that in one moderate quality trial, the use of meditation therapy in anxiety disorders was associated with some reduction in general symptoms of anxiety. Keeping the results of these studies in mind, as well as serving the results of numerous others, in general, meditation has been associated with such promising outcomes as increased knowledge retention, as in the case of Cramney Georgetown University Med Program college students, various health benefits to include pain levels, to include reduced pain levels in populations studied suffering from the symptoms of migraine headaches, Increased and sustained levels of happiness, as evident of measurable reduced levels of depression in Japanese patients diagnosed with cancer. And finally, decreased levels of anxiety, as in the case of Taiwanese 
junior college students in their first semester of secondary school. Another equally important outcome of this capstone analysis was the result of an examination of the efficacy of a spiritual versus a secular practice uh, approach in a meditative practice. To begin with, let's review the definitions of each approach so it is more easy to distinguish between the two. A spiritual meditative practice, as alluded to in its name, centers on an, on an inherently spiritual element. That is, the basis for a person's practice revolves around a recognition of a chosen God or the focus on a divine element. In contrast, a secular practice typically centers on such visual, physical objectives as stress relief, psychological balance, or physical relaxation. While both can ultimately result in similar outcomes, the central difference lies in the underlying reasons for performing the practice. Scholarly literature on the respective efficacies of each approach, such as, the, such as those conclusions demonstrated in both studies conducted by Wachholz and Pergamet, support the suppositions that a spiritual study is more effectual than a secular study. As the authors demonstrated in a controlled study comparing secular and spiritual forms of meditation to assess the benefits of spiritual intervention, the spiritual meditation group had more marked, de had more marked decreases in anxiety and increases in positive mood, spiritual health, and spiritual experiences than the other group surveyed. They also tolerated pain almost twice as long as the other groups. In their conclusions, researchers suggested that this is probably due to the psychosomatic prowess of belief, in that spiritual devotees are able to, for example, shift their mind away from physical ailments and instead contemplate their role in a larger spiritual universe. The final portion of this project involved my evaluations document, documenting my experiences at local centers offering meditation classes in the Anchorage area. Places visited included Laughing Lotus Yoga, Spirit Path Yoga, Snow Buddha Yoga, and finally the Anchorage Zen Community. Using a standard evaluation form that I devised, each initial visit was followed by a written reflection on my experience at each center, complete with commentary that included class descriptions and other considerations such as cost, scheduling, or class emphasis. While in my opinion, each experience was positive in its own unique offering, my personal preference was for the class offered through Laughing Lotus Yoga Studio due to its weekly availability. Um, convenient location and more conventional practice environment. Despite it being the most costly class, it promoted the ideals of a more secular practice with limited spiritual references and also integrated a physically challenging yoga salutation that to me paired nicely with the concluding meditative session. Briefly sharing some of my commentary from the other centers, I thought it was worth noting that Spirit Path Yoga has an instruction, an instructive meditation class that's actually a whole hour long. However, it's only offered sporadically and is therefore not a viable option as if, um, if you are an amateur and you're completely reliant on the structure of the class and the guidance of an instructor to perform your practice. Snow Buddha Yoga meets at convenient times several days a week. However, sessions are currently only offered at the instructor's house and therefore the setting is not ideal for those who are uncomfortable in that environment or have pet allergies, <laughs> as the instructors can be present during the sessions. <laughs> Finally, Anchorage Zen community is arguably the most authentic spiritual experience as it boasts a resident priest as well as Sunday sessions of serious meditative study and ceremonial chanting. As I said, each center offers a unique ultimately personal preference should be the deciding factor when determining where to study if you are interested in adopting your own practice. If, after all this, you are interested in adopting your own practice, a few things to consider include the following points outlined on this slide. Most, more important than comfortable clothes or a yoga mat, an open mind is really the most critical accessory. The practice will only really be beneficial if you are open to most of its premises initially. Also recognize that while the classes discussed 
in the previous slides are great resources, a meditative practice can always be personalized to suit your particular preferences. Taking ideas from visiting classes, videos online, and library readings can result in the creation of your own 15 minute practice commencing at 5 a.m. or a practice that's only carried out once or twice weekly to help you cope with particularly stressful situations. Finally, some positive outcomes to consider include all of those, but all of those discussed but are not limited to those. Your personal practice could very well result in increased levels of energy or more sustained levels of sleep. In either case, if you think meditation has a place in your life as a practice that could benefit could be beneficial to your overall health and well-being, then it might be worth researching at greater length on your own. To conclude, here is a list of my work cited. And finally, a special thanks to Dr. Ann Jackie for her unwavering efforts to see this project through. My capstone classmates who were generous with their time and suggestions. And my husband, Brandon, who provided unending encouragement throughout this process. Thank you.